Iran is home to one of the world's oldest continuous major civilizations, with historical and urban settlements dating back to 7000 BC. On the periphery of the Iranian plateau, that forms a natural, massive fortress. Throughout the late prehistoric period, the Elamite city-state of Susa was closely tied culturally to the Sumerians of Mesopotamia. These tough mountain master archers would remain longtime rivals of the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians, and would remain an ever-present threat, pillaging the cities of the Fertile River Valley in times of strength if the opportunity arose, and paying tribute in times of weakness. During one of these turbulent periods, Elam's unique system of matrilinear succession emerged. Sovereignty was hereditary through the royal women, in that a new ruler was always the son of a sister of a previous sovereign's family. Elamite states were among the leading political forces of the ancient Near East for more than 2,000 years. Susa's cultural and political influence also stretched far beyond their borders, to the north and east, to the growing Iranian tribes of the arid plateau. One of these, the Medes, began uniting the tribes, and together with the Babylonians, would ally together to topple the Assyrian Empire, the largest the world had yet seen at the time. The Medes would go on to conquer a vast but short-lived empire, with a magnificent capital city at Ekbatana. One of the tribes allied with the Medes were the Persians. In 553, their leader Cyrus rebelled against his grandfather, the Mede king Astages, establishing a Persian capital at the ancient Elamite city of Anshan. He finally won a decisive victory in 550 BC, resulting in Astages' capture by his own dissatisfied nobles, who promptly turned him over to the triumphant Cyrus. The following decade, the ancient Elamite city of Susa fell under Persian control. Although the Medes had been conquered by the Persians, they retained a prominent position. In status and in war, they stood next to their Persian cousins. Their court ceremony was adopted by their new sovereigns, who in the summer months resided in Ekbatana and the rest of the year in Susa. Many Mede noblemen were employed as officials, governors, and generals. After the fall of Babylon to Cyrus, the venerable city was also made the capital of the empire, and the construction of another capital city of Passergade on the Iranian plateau was commissioned. That way, the empire could be governed closer to whatever point was most urgent. In stark contrast to his Babylonian and Assyrian predecessors, Cyrus was known as a just king, and tolerant of local religions and customs within his empire. He is praised in the Old Testament of the Bible as a righteous ruler. This massive empire, stretching from Europe to India, was far too large to administer by one man. And under Darius the Great, more than 20 satraps or governors were appointed to administer the provinces where an efficient system of roads were constructed to facilitate communication, trade, and mobilization of troops throughout the empire. Darius implemented Aramaic as the official language, a uniform currency, and a standard system of weights and measures throughout the empire. He also embarked upon a massive building program in Ekbatana, Susa, Passergade, where he built the massive palace complex of Persepolis and the newly conquered province of Egypt. The Persian Achaemenid Empire left a lasting impression on the technology, heritage, and cultural identity of Asia, Europe, and the Middle East and influenced the development and structure of future empires. In fact, the Greeks and later Romans adopted the best features of the Persian method of governing an empire. Alexander of Macedon, a small kingdom to the far west of Persia, was an avid admirer of Cyrus the Great. He conquered most of the Persian Empire by 330 BC, and in the aftermath of his death at the age of 32, his empire was divided among his generals. One of them, Seleucus, received Babylonia, and expanded his domains to include much of the former eastern provinces of the Persian Empire, and then much of the Near East. The Seleucid Empire formed a unique fusion of Persian and Hellenistic culture, and throughout this empire's existence, many Greeks immigrated into the empire. Their expansion was halted by the Ptolemaic dynasty of Egypt and their Roman allies, and after the disastrous Battle of Magnesia, the Seleucids were forced to pay crippling war reparations to the Romans. Greatly weakened from their wars in the west, the Seleucids fell prey to the Parthians. Formerly a dutiful vassal, the Parthians were a nomadic Iranian-speaking people. They had migrated from the eastern banks of the Caspian Sea onto the Iranian plateau. The Seleucids devolved into a minor state and were eventually cannibalized by the Romans and Parthians. The Parthian Empire was not as centralized and did not engage in managing the realm to the level the Seleucids or Achaemenid Persians had. 
Instead, they functioned as a small warrior elite who ruled as Greek-style monarchs from the populated cities of Mesopotamia. The plateau was largely self-governed by the Persian elite. They seldom paid any tax or assimilated into the rest of the Greek and Aramaic-speaking population. But importantly, they supplied the Parthian kings with a steady supply of skilled horse archers, with which they were able to defeat the Romans multiple times in attempts to conquer Parthia. Although there were numerous civil wars, the realm stood relatively peaceful and prosperous, as these wars only typically involved the Parthian warrior class fighting amongst themselves. The Roman Emperor Trajan was the first and only Roman to conquer Mesopotamia. Although this victory was extremely short-lived, Trajan was forced to withdraw, relinquishing his costly gains. The Parthians returned to the Iranian plateau to retake their lands immediately afterwards. And after two more costly wars with Rome, and internal strife, the Parthians were worn thin, and overthrown by a native Persian dynasty, the Sasanians. In stark contrast to the Parthians' decentralized, chaotic style of rulership, Sasanians built a large administrative bureaucracy, and implemented a massive program of urbanization, building and rebuilding thousands of cities throughout the empire. Society was divided in castes, priests, warriors, artisans, and commoners. Although one was born into a caste, one could change by being recognized as having unusual merit in a given area. Unlike the Roman Empire, slavery was uncommon in the Sasanian Empire. The most common being household servants, who were entitled to receiving wages, and could get married if they wanted to. And it was a crime to physically harm a slave within the empire. Sasanian civilization is considered a high point of Persian culture, where a long-lived populous empire was stable and prosperous for hundreds of years. Its trading network stretched far into the Roman Empire, India, East Africa, and China, where the Sasanians sent many emissaries. The large number of Sasanian coins found in southern China also attest to the high trade volume carried out between the two empires. Under the Sasanians, Orthodox Zoroastrianism, the religion of the Achaemenid Empire, was revived. And after the Roman Emperor Constantine made Christianity the state religion, the Sasanians followed suit by promoting Zoroastrianism above other religions and began imposing extra taxes on Christians, but not Jews. However, most religious violence during the Sasanian Empire was targeted against the followers of Mani and Mazdak, who sought to reform the religion of Zoroastrianism. Despite the occasional religious upheaval and wars with the Romans, the Sasanian Empire would prove to be one of the most stable and long-lived empires, with a high standard of living giving rise to the perception of Persian luxury and sophistication. During the redundantly named byzantine sasanian War, the Sasanian Empire reached its greatest extent. This was the final and most devastating of a series of wars fought between the Byzantine, or Eastern Roman Empire, and the Sasanian Empire of Persia. The Persians laid siege to Constantinople, but failed in taking the Roman capital, and were beaten back to their original borders. By the end of the conflict, both sides had exhausted their human and material resources, and achieved very little. Consequently, they were left vulnerable to the sudden emergence of the Islamic Rashidun Caliphate, whose armies invaded both empires only a few years after the war had ended. The Arab forces quickly conquered the entire Sasanian Empire, and deprived the Byzantine Empire of its territories in the Levant, the Caucasus, Egypt, and North Africa. For centuries, the Romans and Sasanians had both hired Arab mercenaries to fight their wars against each other. The armies that poured out of the Arabian desert upon the unexpected and weakened empires were treading on very familiar ground. This has been Epimetheus. I hope you have enjoyed this brief overview of the ancient empires of Iran, from the Elamites to the Islamic conquest. This is truly one of the most impactful areas of the world on history. Even after the Islamic conquest, the conquerors became the conquered and adopted much of Persian culture and exported it throughout the Islamic world. From the empire of Khorasan to that of Timur the Lame, the Iranian plateau has been near the center of world events since the beginning of recorded history. Let me know in the comments what empire in Iranian or Persian history you find most fascinating and would perhaps like to see a video on in the future. Don't forget to smash the like button, that motivates me to keep going, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications every time I make a new video so you don't miss any. And 
I'm a one-man operation. I do all the drawing, editing, researching, writing, and narrating. And I do it on my free time. And if you would like to help me out with my expenses in running this channel, head over to Patreon. And um, I put every dollar you donate there back into making these videos even better.